at the beginning, I wanted to get that dream. I wanted to come here to play baseball and study. I wanted to do it, but I wasn't thinking about the hard things, you know? Okay. I wasn't thinking about that I'm going to be part of my family. Mm. I wasn't thinking that I got to become a completely independent person because I, I'm going to be alone for years, you know? Mm -hmm. So I wasn't thinking that it's a new culture, it's a new language. Uh -huh. So here we are. So I remember that the international advisor, she went to pick me up and she talked to me in English and he was like, hey, Like, this is not part of the dream, you know? <laughs> like, now I got to speak in English. Like, yeah. what, I, what I'm doing now? And everything. You know? The next day I wake up and the coach say, hey, you have a meeting with me at 9 a.m. In, in my office. I was like, okay. And when he went to the office, mm -hmm. I was like, hey, this, this is in English right now. I have a, a meeting in English with a baseball coach, with my head coach, actually. So what I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I understand everything you are saying. But I wasn't. I was, <laughs> I was recording, I was recording everything on my phone, uh -huh. and when it was going to be bad on my room, I was going to translate everything by the translator in, in internet. Wow. So it was right that moment when I said, hey, you are here, this, is, this was your dream, so fight for this now. Hello everyone! Welcome back to another Stories with Richie, and today we have our special guest, Santiago Gonzalez. Welcome. Thank you, Richie. Thank you very much for having me here. I really appreciate it. Yes, from Valencia, Venezuela. Tell me more about that. Yeah, um, just a kid from, from Venezuela, from Valencia, a specific San Diego. Um, 22 years old right now, being here at Corbin University playing baseball and um, this is my third year okay. as a student my sec my second one as athlete i was in a community college in iowa okay so now i'm here um, my second semester um here we are okay so when did you start playing baseball i started playing baseball when it was three years old wow since i remember i have a bat a baseball glove and a baseball on my hands uh, My parents, they, they love baseball, you know? Uh -huh. So I started loving baseball since I'm three years old, and here we are. Wow. Okay, so who, who's your favorite baseball player? Uh, my favorite baseball player is Miguel Cabrera. Okay. Know? I That's thought it was going to be Altuve. No, or no. Oh. Miggy. Miggy is my guy. Miggy is a... Uh, I admire that guy, you know? Um, he's my favorite athlete, my favorite baseball player. He's a big guy. He He's, you know, everybody loves him at home, so... Yeah, future, yeah. future, future Hall of Fame. Yes, here it is. First day, first balloon, you know? Wow. Yes. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so, when it was about home, you, you know a little bit about this, you know? Um, we, as a, as a baseball player, we, we are always trying to, to find other kind of opportunities, you know? Um, we, 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 we don't see, like, the scholarship, you know, the, the baseball, um, the college career as too frequently at home, you know, not everybody's coming to, to play and study in a university in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So my first plan was to sign as a professional player when I was 16 years old. That's, that's what I wanted to that's do. That's the dream. Really. That's the dream that everybody has in Dominica, Puerto Rico, Venezuela. Yeah. So I, I tried to do it, you know. I, I was working really hard in an academy mm -hmm. since I was like 13, 14 years old, working hard every day, you know. How was your routine playing? Yeah. My routine was, hey, my routine was a little bit crazy, Richie. Um, <laughs> yeah, okay. Tell, yeah, tell um, me more being, about being that. Being honest with you, so I wake up every day um, around 6 a.m., you know, used to go to the to the baseball field. So, you know how we practice in Latin America, you know, you got to be in the field at 7 and you are done at 12 at noon. So that's what it was, I was doing. After that, I got to go, I got to go home. I got to eat quick and I got to go to class. Yes. Because, you know, there are many people that they go to class in, in on Saturdays. Uh -huh. That's what some people do at home. But my mom, she, she wanted me to, to keep in high school. You know, she told me, if you want to play baseball, you can do it. But you got to go to high school, too. You are, you are not going to be done with high school until you graduate. So wow. you are not going to stop your high school. Go to, high, go to, go to, the, to the practice in the morning, but uh -huh. you got to go to high school, too, in the, in the afternoon. So that's what I did. Um, I went to high school at... 1 p.m., you know, I was done at 5, and then I got to go to the weight room or I got to go to to room or something like that, you know, some conditioning or whatever that the, the coach had for me. Uh -huh. So that's what he was doing every day, every single day. Every and and then the, some homework in the evening. And some homework in the evening when I was too tired, but I had to do it because I had my mom right there telling yeah. me to do it, you know. 
she never stopped. What was your mom's name? My mom is my mom's name is Juliana. Juliana. Yeah, that's my mom's name. Hi to say hi to Juliana. Hey, hey hi. Te amo mucho. Wow, it's so cool. Sí, sí. So when you say that, it reminds me how I grew up. So for me, it was about the same routine. And shout out to moms because in my case, my mom. Some coaches ask uh, my mom, it's like, hey, uh, would you be willing to put Richie on that special schooling, which is just on Saturdays, just once a week, which you don't get as much education, you don't pay much attention. It's just getting it done. Um, but if you go to private school, to public school, uh, every single day, you get a better education and, you know, you can achieve more than just a um, simple uh, certificate. Yeah, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful that my mom, she was always there, you know, and I did in high school. I got a better experience as a student in high school, but I also had too many experience with my classmates, you know. That's something that I... You know, I had the baseball there, and I have too many friends from baseball, but I also have too many friends from high school, mm -hmm. just because I never stopped it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I live that experience. I feel like all the kids, they got to live that experience. Yes. It's really hard if you if you say, yeah, I'm going to give my life to baseball, but I'm going to stop the high school, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to go to the high school on the Saturdays. You are not going to live the spirit that everybody's supposed to live. Yeah. So I did it. I did it, and I'm really grateful. At the moment, I was like, hey, mom, you know, all my friends, they, they have class on Saturday. And That's I, it. I don't. Mm -hmm. So let me do it. And she was, hey, you won't do it. You got to go to class every day. You got to go to practice every day. Make it to your, your make it to your team. Mm -hmm. Do it. And then you are going to you are going to be grateful to me about it. So I'm thankful right now. Wow. That's shout out to moms again. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's uh, yeah. when you say that, it reminds me of my experience growing up because in our culture, uh, we put a lot of effort on putting baseball um, as the main priority, yeah. which it could, it is a good thing, but putting education aside, um, I don't think it's helpful in the long term. So that's why I think, uh, I, I believe players could go farther if they were better educated. Like, yeah. but it's life; it's a business. So yes, it is. Wow. Yeah. So growing up playing baseball every single day, and. So how did you come to know the Lord? Like, how do you become a Christian? So it was right that moment after my high school okay. that I wanted, you know, it was like, oh, I'm done with high school. So mm -hmm. let's get a professional baseball contract, you know, because uh -huh. that's what I wanted to do. Um, the most of my, of my friends, they, they got signed. So I was, you know, like fighting for that dream too. Mm -hmm. And he wasn't thinking about, you know, like coming here to get a scholarship and playing college ball. So I, I keep working hard to get my, my sign to get signed by a professional baseball team. And it gets that moment when, you know, the things are not working for you, when yeah. you keep working hard every day, you keep doing your things, but um, you start seeing that it's not happening for you. Mm -hmm. So... How was that for you? It was really hard. It was really hard. Um, I was like, um, I would say 18, 18, 17, 19 years old. Um, I start, I start like, you know, everybody tell you, especially my family, you know, we are very Christian and we believe a lot, but my parents start telling me like, Hey, you gotta believe it's going to happen. It's going to happen. And if that if it doesn't happen for you, God has another plan for you. Mm -hmm. And I start, you know, listening to that phrase, like kind of every day, every day, literally every day, because every day I was like, you know, like kind of sad, like kind of like frustrated because I wasn't, you know, like getting the things that I was supposed to get for me but not for god because god had something else for me you know so i remember that um my dad my dad and my mom they were always always telling me like hey god has a plan for you remember he has a plan for you but the thing is that he had a plan for me but i wanted the other plan you know what i mean i wanted mm -hmm. my plan so, so what i hear you saying is that god your plan was to get drafted and sign for a professional contract yeah but god's plan was plan was different yeah tell me more about that so um my plan was to to get signed at the age of 16 17 years old you know that's how it was in in, in latin america mm -hmm. but god's god's plan was different mm -hmm. so when it was like, around 19 i started believing in something else i was like hey here we go i i got my high school degree mm -hmm. i still playing baseball i'm actually good i have good you know like i can play college ball mm -hmm. let me try this so it's right that moment when I start believing that God has another plan for me and I got to follow it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I start following that plan. I start, you know, like sending emails to coaches, like talking with, you know, like companies who, who bring players to here to America. Okay. 
you know, doing all that kind of things. And it's crazy, Rich. It's crazy when, when I remember I remember about that moment and I remember how all my mind changed to the other plan that God has for me in that moment, you know? It's not that I forgot about the other plan that I that I had on my mind. But I start believing I start believing that there are other plans for you and you gotta you gotta go for it too. So that's how it was. I start, you know, like believing the other plan. I start dreaming about it too, you know, yeah. every single day. It was like, okay, now I wanna go there. I wanna play college ball. I wanna get my degree in America. I wanna learn English. You know, I wanna have new friends. I wanna have in a new culture. Let's do it. So I just start fighting for the new thing. And here we are, then how, that. How was your journey learning English? Oof, that was really, really hard. Um, I, as I said, um, you know, in the last in the last answer, as I said, and at the beginning, yeah. I wanted to get that dream. I wanted to come here to play baseball and study. I wanted to do it, but I wasn't thinking about the hard things, you know. Okay. I wasn't thinking about that I'm gonna be part of my family. Mm. I wasn't thinking that I gotta become a completely independent person because I, I'm gonna be alone for years, you know. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't thinking that it's a new culture, it's a new language. So here we are. So I remember that I came here to America by for first time in 2020, okay. in the spring of 2020, January 12th. I remember. Yeah, you don't forget that. Yeah, I won't forget that. Um, I got. I went to Iowa to my junior college there. Mm -hmm. Um, when I went to the airport, the airport. Um, I remember that the international advisor she went to pick me up and she talked to me in English and it was like, hey. Like, this is not part of the dream, you know? <laughs> like, now I got to speak in English. Like, yeah. what, I, what I'm doing now, yeah. you know? I remember she went with somebody who speaks Spanish, so they helped me a little bit. But I went to sleep. I went, you know, I, I, I meet my roommate. I went to the room. I, I meet the, the school and everything. The next day I wake up, and the coach say, hey, you have a meeting with me at 9 a.m. in the in my office. I was like, okay. And when he went to the office, mm -hmm. I was like, hey, this, this is in English right now. I have a, a meeting in English with a baseball coach, with my head coach, actually. So what I'm doing, you know? Mm -hmm. I was like, yeah, I understand everything you are saying. But I wasn't. I was, I, re <laughs> I was recording I was recording everything on my phone. Uh -huh. And when it was going to be bad on my room, I was going to translate everything by the translator in, in internet. Wow. So it was right that moment when I said, hey, you are here. This, is, this was your dream, so fight for this now. Because this is something super important that I always say to the kids when I'm back home. Okay. I, when I go back home, I like to talk with the kids, you know, and I like to, to, to talk a little bit about my, my experience. Yeah, it's important. Yeah, and when I go in there, I say, hey, you are fighting for a dream that is becoming a professional baseball player, that is go to college ball or whatever you have in mind. But when you get there, you got to keep fighting because it, it's going to become like... It's going to be harder. Yeah, it's going to be harder for you. So yes. you got to go there and you got to keep fighting. So it was that moment when I was like, okay, new challenge. Learn a new language. You know, let a new culture. You gotta go. You gotta go. You gotta do it. Let's do it. So I start doing it, Rishi. I start like you know, like taking English class, like taking like extra classes in my in my first year. Like I was taking like extra credits used to to have like some professor to teach me like you know like tutors and stuff like that to teach me like more English. And here we are. You know, we don't have the perfect English right now, but we are being working on it. So Survive. yeah, yeah. Can communicate. Yeah. Uh, for me, I remember coming to Corbin. And I had some, I under, I could understand. I had a basic English level. And I remember that Coach uh, Leger at the time, um, he, he was saying what we were supposed to do in practice. And I didn't understand anything. Yeah. All I did was to follow my teammates because I didn't know what was going on. But I'm glad that you had the, you know, you were smart enough to say, okay, let me record this. Uh, conversation and then yeah. I'll, I'll interpret that later. Yeah. So, yeah. that's smart. And same thing in the baseball field, you know. Sometimes mm -hmm. we have like, you know, like plays, like game situations, that kind of things. And you know that little meeting that you do in the mound, um, the coach go to you and he say, hey, you got to do this. And you are like, hey, what I'm doing, <laughs> you know. So you got to talk with one of your teammates who have a better English, yes. who is fluent or something like that. And you got to go, hey, explain me better in Spanish. Mm -hmm. So you have a better idea about what you are going to do. That was my first and my second year. It was really hard, yeah. but I made it, you know. Um, right now, I have a better communication with the coaches, with my teammates. Yeah. But, you know, as, as we said, you know, we are in the baseball field and we, we, we don't need the English, you know. We just want to play baseball. We just want to do it. So, 
you know, also that passion, you know, that passion to play baseball, that passion to, to get better, you know, that, that help you to have a better communication with your teammates and with your coaches. So if you want to get better, you're going to learn the language, you know what I mean? So that's what I can that, you know, give me like motivation. Also give me motivation to know that, you know, I got to go to the classroom, I'll get a good GPA if I want to keep getting a scholarship. Yep. So if I want a good GPA, I got to learn the language. So, you know, everything is going around. Also, if connected. You, yeah, if you want to talk with people, if you want to make new friends, if you want to go into the culture, you got to learn the language. So that's how it was. Um, we, keep, we keep working on it, but yeah. yeah. So it's a long journey um, experience. Yeah. I wonder how was um, the cultural challenge for you? Like how... How was that for you uh, to adapt to a new culture? Yeah, it was really hard, but I I enjoyed it and I keep enjoying it because I I like to learn new things. You okay. know, I like to learn new things. I like to learn how the people from other cultures they mm -hmm. are. You know, so it was really hard. You know how we are in in in, in Latin America. You know, in Dominican or Venezuela. You know, we like to dance. We like to smile. We laugh at everything. You know, we are always making jokes. So sometimes I can hear and it was like, hey, you are not in Venezuela, so you are not gonna make a joke for everything. You gotta, you know, respect that kind of things. You know, and I also understood that that when you when you are in the in the baseball field mm -hmm. or when you are like in in the classroom, you gotta have like that maybe that respect or that discipline. The, that, mi the mindset. Yeah, the, that mindset, you know, that you got to be like, hey, like this is my work, this is my job. Uh, because we see baseball as a job, you know, we yeah. see baseball as a work and the classroom too. Mm -hmm. So I start, you know, like learning about the culture that we got to take the, like things more serious, you know what I mean? Like this is not just a game. We got to take this kind of thing serious. But yeah, um, the culture was a challenge and especially the food, you know. Oh, tell the me more about yeah, that. The food, it was a challenge for me. Uh, it's still a challenge for me. Do you know how to cook? <laughs> yeah, I know how to cook, but I don't cook as, as my mom cooks. So. Ah, <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it was a challenge too, you know, but we are getting used to all those things and enjoying that, that, that kind of things like every day. Um, when I go back home, I enjoy more the food than what I, how I was enjoying that food four years ago, you know. Because now I know, you know, how hard it is to don't have my mom food or but or the home food yeah. or whatever. You appreciate that more. I appreciate that more right now than before. So For me, it's, it, I'm very blessed. My mom just lived like an hour away. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> I wish. I wish my mom had a but what. Yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah, um, the culture is a bit challenged. But when you have your mind set and you are trying to enjoy it, a new culture you are trying to learn, I think the things are more easy for, for us. Yeah, it sounds like you have a growth mindset and that's something very helpful in everything that you approach in yeah. life. And I'm curious about how was that for you? Um, you had a dream. Your dream was to play professional baseball. And then you couldn't achieve that, but the Lord opened a different door for you. So how is that for you, not achieving that goal? It was really hard um, at the beginning. At the beginning, it was really hard. Um, I was really frustrated about the situation. Um, but that told me how how believe in God, you know, how believe in faith, how walk by with faith every single day. Mm -hmm. Why? Because when you don't... For me, the how how work. So when when something doesn't happen for you, it's because that that doesn't belong to you. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That that's not your plan. That's mm -hmm. not what God has for you. So I didn't know that until that happened. You know, I feel that what happened to me back home, and then I can hear and what the, the 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 journey that I'm living right now. You know, the dream that I'm living right now because I see it as a dream still. Um, it was like that door that God opened it for me to start understanding that. Hey, this is the faith, you know, you got to believe, you got to go with, with this, you got to do the right things, you got to do it like this, and you got to understand that I always are going to I always going to have a plan for you. Mm -hmm. So that was like the, you know, like the the key or the yeah. the door that was opening for me to understand too many things and I still do it. Um there are many situations every day that sometimes I don't understand why things work like that, but I remember when it was but hung trying to get trying to get something, it was like, "Hey, here we are. God has a plan for you." So just believe it, believe it, and go for it. Amen. So, how did you happen to know about Corbin University? 
So I was in my junior college at, at, in Iowa. Uh, I went to my junior college in Iowa. Um, on my sophomore year, you know, they started looking for schools and everything. Um, my coaches, you know, they had, like, many meetings with me, telling me, like, what kind of offers I have, like, where I want to go and everything. So we hear about Corbin University. Um, I have some communication with, with Coach Brack. Um, we have many emails and stuff. And I had some other offers, but what I most like here it was that they were, like, really interested in me, you know. They were always like, hey, how, how, you, how are you? Like, how is everything going? How your season is going? And everything, and I also, this is, you know, like a Christian school, so they kind of have, like, that, um, they talk to you about it, you know, um, because there are, as I said before, there are many situations every day when you are going to feel like, hey, like, things are not working, but it's really, it's really nice when you go to the classroom and you hear, you know, at least a, a little, a little message about, hey, things are going to, are going to go well, are going to go well. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and um, that's what I can hear, and, you know, here we are. Oh, that's good. Um, how has coming to Corbin changed your life? Um, it's, it's been a lot. It's been a lot. And as I said, I really like the way that um, everywhere do, everywhere you go here at Corbin, if you go to the classroom, if you go to the CAF, somewhere you go, you are going to hear a, a good message, you know? You are going to you are gonna hear a good message. You are going to see a smile. You know, you are going to see somebody who, who, who looks like they are, you know, like they are having a good day. So that changes your day, and that kind of changes your life too. If you if you see it that way, you know, if you go to the cafe and somebody's being nice to you, if you go to the to the lobby in, at PBG in the in the dorms. the dorms, and somebody's nice to you, and you go at, you hear a good message, you go at, you you hear good message from people, you start being like, hey, like things are going to be nice today, and yeah. things are going to be nice tomorrow. And Positivity sounds like yeah. like that. Um, the baseball team. Tell me more about your experience so far. Oh, my experience so far is, is been really well. You know, I can hear the last fall, so um, I don't have that experience that you know everybody have in the team so far because this is gonna be my first season at Corvan, mm -hmm. where I really like what I see. I really like um, the people that we have around. Mm -hmm. I really like um, our coaching staff. We have a really young coaching staff. Um, really um, young coaches that they know a lot about the the conference they know a lot about Corban so they can talk to you a, lo a lot about their journey at Corban um I feel that really like confidence you know with with the coaching staff and with my teammates too so yeah I really like it let's see what this season has for us I'm really excited about it you know we are always excited about play baseball so mm. it's the season is right there we are going there and we are going to try to do our best that's good uh, just to finish if someone is watching or listening to you right now and they have a dream, um, but for some reason it's not going as they planned. What would be your advice to all of them? My first advice is to keep working hard every day, no matter what. Keep working for what you want. Keep working for what you believe. But the most important thing is that if you are going to work for something, do it with love. And do it believing. Be believe on that, you know. You got to do it believing in what you want to. But as I said, do it with love. Because sometimes maybe you are going to the baseball field or you are going to the classroom and you say that you are working hard, but you are not working, with, you know, you are not working how you are supposed to. You are not doing it with love. So for everybody who is watching this, um, for the kids back home, I always talk to them and I really like to give my message to them because I want them to be here. You know, I want them to, to get all the things that I've been getting so far. So for everybody who is listening to this and they, you know, they I can that they feel that they are not going forward, you know, that they, they are kind of there still and they they are not like achieving what they want to. I'm stuck. Yeah, they kind of stuck. Um, you got to do it with love. Do it with love and do the right things and God is going to give it to you. He always going to give it to you if you do the right things. So keep working hard, but do it with love, as I said. Um, and the, the, the things are going, are going to be fine for you. I promise. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much. Um, before we finish, uh, World Classic is coming up. What's your team coming up? Um, I got Venezuela. I got to say Venezuela, you know. Uh, we have a really a really good team. Dominican has a really good team too, but we got to see. You know, baseball is a small. Um, let's see what we got. But I got Venezuela. Okay, well, thank you so much, Santiago. And we appreciate so much learning about your journey coming from Venezuela to Corvin University. And I'm very happy for what the Lord is doing with you, your life, and your family. 
Yeah, I mean, thank you, Richie. Thank you for, for the opportunity. And I'm really grateful that, you know, I can talk a little bit about my experience. And, and hopefully, you know, everything is going to keep going great. And thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hey, thank you, everybody, for watching. I will see you next time in Stories with Richie. Let's go. Cool.